Well, hello there, my name is Mangrove Jane, and today I'm trying out this journal type series of videos for a bit. The Christmas before last, I managed to participate in Vlogmas. Of course, it also kind of exhausted me and my family. There were a lot of late nights editing and recording, and a lot of cranky days as I walked around in a sleep deprived haze. It made me realize I would never really be a daily vlogger. I found it hard enough to vlog every second day. However, for me at this point, it is kind of an interesting exercise to chronicle what I'm doing in a second life, real life crossover type of exploration. I might show you some of the things I'm doing in my real life art and academic world, as well as go through some of the things I've been doing in my online world. Some weeks, these are going to be really short videos as the work and pressure of completing my postgraduate degree catches up with me. And I hit the zone where everything is due at once and nothing seems to be going right and both my lives are just stress, stress, stress. But I'm totally okay with that as it will document what it's really like to be an academic in both my worlds. It's simply the reality. Other weeks, I'm hoping to get out and explore a bit more and show you how I live my second life and what I'm actually doing. I may be able to show you snippets of the artworks I'm producing for my second life installation on the homestead sim where I will be working on. I'd like to do a huge shout out to the sponsor of this exhibit, Consignment Furniture. The homestead sim that I'm currently building on has been kindly handed over to me for building and showing this installation by consignment, for whom I am truly thankful as the budget for my works was getting really tight at this point. I've even stopped buying gacha and attending shopping events. However, if you want some seriously good mesh furniture, decor and vehicles, go check them out. They have a super interesting shopping sim. I always like shops that don't just look like a simple building, but are rather fascinating places to visit just on their own. And now they also have a marketplace shop. So even if you aren't in world, you can check out their stuff. So this week, what have I done? Well, let's see. I've done quite a lot of reading and note taking for my exegesis, which is the written justification of the work that I've produced, the methods and methodologies that underpin my research, and also the exemplars who have informed my visual practice. It is basically how I explain my work and what I've learned in a way that conforms to academic guidelines. I've just finished writing a section of my draft on avatar attachment and how those levels of attachment and identity lead to varying levels of reality extension. So. That was fun. I had a meeting with my supervisor, Shari. I genuinely enjoy meeting with my supervisor. She is incredibly down to earth and knowledgeable. I always come away from my meetings feeling like I know what my next step is and I just need to stop whinging about it and just do it already. I can, so I just have to prove that I can. Oh, I also discussed my PhD research proposal and the types of topics I wanted to look at and whether it was relevant within the research field and it is. So that also needs to be written up. There is a lot of writing for me at this stage. And because there is a lot of writing, I've also been taking time on the weekends to go back to some basic physical art exercises. It really helps my physical practice as well as helps me mentally to go over the basics and practice using my hands rather than the computer to make things. The past couple of weekends, I've done a couple of large intuitive drawings in pencil and pen, as well as practice my physical world photography. I'm still very new at physical world photography, so a lot of what I do is simply playing around with the settings on the camera. Now that I've got a handle on some of the basics of ISO, shutter speed and aperture, I'm finding myself shooting more and more in manual as it gives me much more control than shooting in automatic. My week in Second Life has kind of been out of Second Life. I haven't really logged in much. I logged in for an hour or so just the other day to do some landscaping on the installation sim. Um, but I still catch up on what is happening through my Twitter, Facebook, blog feed and Flickr. New World Notes have actually put out some very interesting articles this week on what makes art and Second Life real art, which in turn has meant I've had some fascinating conversations with fellow academics, Second Life, Real Life, crossover artists Mondrian and Tiz Baxter about what constitutes art, the canon and the ephemerality of online world art. This of course has led on from the shutting down of the LEA sims. 
after reading multiple articles, blog posts and opinions on this, there are a couple of things I've been thinking about it. Firstly, I would like to point out the opinion from John from Cultivate Magazines and Galleries that Linden Lab is a profit-making company. They run the servers, they set the rules, they deal with the legalities of things and they are beholden to being a business first and foremost. They are not beholden to donating money or land to anyone. They have in the past done so and that is fantastic and it is in the best interest of the company to promote and support groups within the world for economic, charitable and PR reasons. Then don't get me wrong here, I desperately want to see the return of philanthropic support in the form of tear-free land, but I do think the LEA committee needed an overhaul and I don't think we have a right to it. It's hard to claim credibility when you aren't being fully transparent or adhering to your own rules, which was the major complaint against the LEA committee in the first place. I also believe when boards or standing committees have become stagnant and complacent, that is the point at which an overhaul needs to be made to the committee and to the structure. That is the point at which a community that wants something like tear or land or some philanthropic donation have to be logical and make a plan that is an example of a good business model. Do I think the closing of the LEA grants will be a huge hit to the artistic community in Second Life though? Nah, not really. I'm a bit of an optimist actually. I'm hoping it will make the community come together in some way. I'm hoping an enterprising group of people will step up and take on the challenge of making art more visible in Second Life and to Second Life. The best way you can support artists within Second Life though is to attend their work and go see exhibits. If it is for sale, buy their works. If there is a donation box on the sim, pop a few lindens in there, comment on their blogs, seek them out and talk to them about what they are doing. Promote and credit their work on social media. Talk about it on the Second Life forums, write about it in your blog or talk about it in your vlog. And most of all, don't rip off their work by taking a photo and using it as a texture or even worse, popping it in your own frame and selling it yourself. And that is all I really wanted to say about that. Oh, but one last thing before I sign out. Have you seen the video about Moyerland that Second Life have just put out? Made of course by the talented Drax. Moyerland is featured as a destination in the video as well as the guide. I'm so excited about this. Moya was one of the art sims I visited within the first five days of me resing in world and I will often go back there to wander around and be amazed at the work he has produced both in Second Life and in real life. If you haven't seen that video I will leave a link to that as well as the slurl down below and in my blog. Well, that is all for me here today. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. And while you are there, punch the bell as well, which will give you notifications of any new videos I release. And I will catch you all in the next video.